On August 22nd, 2015, Farmington Lodge number 151 of Farmington, Michigan celebrated their 150 year anniversary. The Grand Lodge of Michigan convened by Most Worshipful Grand Master Richard D. Wisely to perform a rededication ceremony. Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this very, very important event. This is our 150th anniversary and it's a very important and a historical event for this lodge and for all the brothers, so as for the family and friends. So we really appreciate everybody being here tonight. On January 13th, 1865, Farmington Lodge number 151 was chartered as a Masonic Lodge under the Grand Lodge of Michigan, exactly four months before the end of the Civil War. Today we are, we are in 2015 and we are still going strong, and I'm sure for another 150 years from now. The most merciful Grand Lodge of free and accepted Masons of the state of Michigan. Most Worshipful Grandmaster, I now provide you our gavel for the ceremony. Thank you, Worshipful. Please be seated. Brethren, ladies, and guests, we are here today to rededicate this temple to Masonic uses, an event of much interest to the members of the fraternity in this community and to the craft in general. The first lesson we are taught in Masonry is that no man shall ever enter upon any important and great event without first invoking the blessing of deity. Therefore, before proceeding with this important ceremony, let us invoke the blessing of the Supreme Architect of the Universe. Please rise. Right Worshipful Grand Chaplain, invoke the blessing of Deity. Supreme Grand Architect of the Universe, by, whom, by whose almighty all words resign, without whose blessing the craftsman's toil in vain, we beseech thee to be with us at this time, and to bless the work we are engaged. Graciously bestow us wisdom in all our doings, strengthen our minds in all our difficulties, and the beauty and harmony of holiness in all our communications and work. Let faith be the foundation of our hope, and charity be the fruit of our obedience to thy revealed will. And may these and all of our services better prepare us for that nobler service in that celestial lodge above, where thy are the light and glory. Amen. So more be. The zeal displayed by the brethren of this lodge in support of this temple deserves the commendation of the entire craft. In re order of your request, we will examine the various apartments. And in order that that may be done in ancient form, you are to cause the proper working tools to be delivered to us. Most Worshipful Grandmaster, Having been entrusted with the superintendence and management of this edifice, and having, according to the best of my ability, accomplished the task assigned to me, 
I return my thanks for the honor of this appointment, and beg to leave to surrender up the implements which have been committed to my care when the foundation of this fabric was laid, humbly hoping the exertions toward this enterprise will be crowned with your approbation and that of the most worshipful Grand Lodge. Worshipful Grand Marshal. Most Worshipful Grand Master. Present these working tools to the proper Grand Lodge officers. Worshipful Deputy Grand Master. Most Worshipful Grand Master. What is the implement of your office? The square. What are its moral and Masonic uses? To square our actions by the square of virtue and prove our work. Apply the square to the parts of this building that should be square and make report. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand with thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city in compact together. Whether the tribes go up, or the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel, give thanks to the name of the Lord. Most worshipful Grand Master, I find this building to be square. The craftsmen have performed their duty. Worshipful Senior Grand Warden. Most Worshipful Grand Master. What is the implement of your office? The level. What are its moral and Masonic uses? Morally, it teaches equality, and we use it to test horizontals. Apply the level to those parts of this building which should be level and make report. Most worshipful Grand Master, I find this building to be level. The craftsmen have performed their duty. Worshipful Junior Grand Warden. Most worshipful Grand Master, what is the implement of your office? The plum. What are its moral and Masonic uses? Morally, it teaches us rectitude of conduct, but we use it for the to try perpendiculars. Apply the plumb to the parts of this building that should be plumb and make report. Grand Master, I find this building to be plumb. The 
craftsmen have performed their duty. Brethren, the reports of our officers convince us that this building, which you have maintained, is entitled to our approval, and our inspection satisfies us that the various rooms are well arranged for work for Freemasonry. We shall now proceed with the rededication of this temple in ancient form and usage. Senior and junior grand deacons. Uncover the elements. Worshipful Grand Marshal, form the procession. King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow son of the tri tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding, and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrote all his work. Most merciful Grand Master, in the dedication of Masonic Halls, it has been an immemorial custom to pour the lodge on the or corn on the lodge as an emblem of nourishment. I therefore present you with this vessel of corn to be employed by you with bravery to ancient form and usage. In the name of the great Jehovah, to whom be all honor and glory, I now dedicate solemnly this temple and all its apartments and appointments, its various halls and corridors, its furniture and appurtenances to Freemasons. Brethren of the Grand Lodge, attend the Grand Honor. For he cast two pillars of brass of eighteen cubits high apiece, and a line of twelve cubits did he compass either of them about. And he made two chapters of molten brass to set upon the top of the pillars. At the height of one of the chapters was five cubits, the height of one of the chapters was five cubits, and the nets of checker work and wreaths of chain work for the chapters which were upon the top of the pillars. Seven for the one chapter and seven for the other chapter. Most worshipful Grand Master, wine and album of refreshment was used by our ancient brethren in the consecration and dedication of their lodges. I therefore present to you this vessel to be used on this special occasion for Masonic usages and forms. In the name of the Holy Saints John, I do solemnly dedicate this temple, its apartments and appointments, its various halls and corridors, its furniture and appurtenances to virtue. Grand Lodge attend the Grand Honor. And he made the pillars, two rows round about upon one network, to the cover to cover the chapters that were upon the top. With pomegranates, so did he for one other chapter. And the chapters that were upon the top of the pillars were with lily work in the porch, four cubits, and the chapters 
the two pillars and had pomegranates also against the belly, which was by the network. And the pomegranates were 200 in rows around upon the one chapter. He set upon the pillars in the ports of the temple. He set up the right pillar and called it the Nera Jachin. And he set up the left pillar and called it named thereof Boaz. And upon the top of the pillars was lily work. So was the work of the pillars finished. Most forceful grandmaster, I present you on this occasion, according to ancient customs, this vessel of oil. An emblem of joy, which should emulate in the very bosom to the completion of this very important undertaking. In the name of the whole fraternity, wherever it be so dispersed, I solemnly dedicate this temple and all things that pertain thereto to universal benevolence. Brethren of the Grand Lodge, attend the Grand Honor. Supreme Architect of the Universe, who sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and doest thy will in the army of, in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, the heaven and the heavens of heaven cannot contain thee. How much less the house that we have built! Thou dwellest in the light, inaccessible and full of glory. Yet thou hast made thyself known unto us, and thy savest health among all nations. We come to offer thee this temple built with all the skill and cunning workmen, adorned with the beauty of human art, furnished with all the vessels of convenient for the service in ritual of our worship, and devote gratitude for the gracious privilege. We now solemnly dedicate it all to thee, and at the same time renew our vows of consecration to the principles of Freemasonry inspired by the word, friendship, morality, and brotherly love. May the Shekinah of thy presence fill this place with greater glory, that, that of the first temple, by the light of thy word, be instructed by the light of thy countenance. And may we be cheered, and by the light of the glorious hope, may we be inspired to do great things for thee. May these walls whisper only accents of truth. These halls echo tread of manly footsteps, and these chambers witness <coughs> such acts of charity, and will gladden my human heart. We all offer these the works of Freemasonry of this city for the approval and acceptance of God of Masons all over the world. And when the earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, may we all be permitted to enter that house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Amen. So be. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. These ceremonies are not without a proper significance. They are not simply to pass away in idle hour. Their purpose is to impart a solemn and instructive lesson. This temple, now dedicated to Masonic usage, conveys the idea of wisdom, strength, and beauty. It is consecrated in the name of the great Jehovah, teaching us again that in all our work, begun and finished, we should acknowledge and magnify his holy name. 
The altar of masonry must ever be the shrine of our sincere devotion. May the eye that seeth in secret witness here that devout piety which seeks the world of silence, and its worship may be free of camp and ostentation. Our march, thrice around the lot, reminds us of the journey of life, the path of which masonry in its practical application brightens and makes secure. Our step is the mark of time. Our guide, the invisible hand. Our destiny, eternity. These ceremonies of dedication are in harmony with the spirit and teachings of the prayer, to which our allegiance is always due, in whose success we rejoice, in whose recorded history is but a glorious page in the development and uplift of mankind. We have dedicated this temple to virtue, a sublime ideal worthy of the aspiration of every mason, to which we are inspired by the tenets and amplified by the lectures in each degree. We have also dedicated this temple to universal benevolence. Charity is one of the noblest attributes of Freemasonry. And although our philanthropic vision must first detect the needs of a brother in distress, an institution as great as ours should always display a benevolent attitude towards mankind. This event is but a milestone in the progress of our beloved work. It is another evidence in the onward march and stability of the craft to which our allegiance is always due, and of past history of which is illustrious, and the future is rich in promise for greater glory. To the worshipful master and brother of Farmington Lodge number 151, we tender you our congratulations. May your zeal and loyalty be amply rewarded. May peace and plenty abide with you. And may every brother be animated by the spirit and teachings of Freemasons, so that the honor, glory, and reputation of this institution will be firmly established and the world at one class convinced of its good effect. Senior and Junior Grand Deacons, <clears throat> recover the elements. In the name of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of free and accepted Masons of the state of Michigan, I proclaim Lodge, Farmington Lodge 151, solemnly dedicated by the most worthy brother, Richard D. Wisely, Grand Master of Masons. This I proclaim to the south and to the west and from the east, the craft will take due attention and govern themselves accordingly. Granddaughters. Brethren, granddaughters. Please be seated. I would like to introduce the Grand Lodge officers. From Farmington Hills and Farmington Lodge, Number 151, the Grand Steward, Jonathan J. Worthy, 
from Pleasant Ridge in North Ancient Craft Lodge number 551, the Grand Stewart Larry M. Galloway. From Kalamazoo in Kalamazoo Anchor Lodge number 22, the Grand Musician Jerry Millard. From Traverse City in Traverse City Lodge number 222, the Worshipful Grand Marshal Craig H. Mason. From South Haven in Manawana Lodge number 268, the Worshipful Senior Grand Deacon Mark A. Manning. From Clarkston in Cedar Lodge number 60, the Right Worshipful Grand Lecturer Thomas Braun. From Vicksburg in Portage Bradley Lodge number 340 and Paw Lodge number 25, the Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer and Past Grand Master Michael J. Jungle. From Sterling Heights in Stony Creek Lodge number 5, the Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden David M. Hill. From Wyoming in Doric Lodge number 342, the Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden Joshua M. Woodwick. From Brownstown in Solomon Key Lodge number 580, the Right Worshipful Grand Deputy Grand Master William R. Finkel. <laughs> Uh, we have Wayne E. Turton, past Grand Master. Of course, Wayne is from Farmington Lodge, so this is his home lodge. I will now proceed to close my proclamation. Worshipful Senior Grand Deacon. Worshipful Grand Master. Attend the altar. Please rise. Worshipful Senior Grand Deacon, return the flag to the east. granted me by the most worshipful Grand Lodge of free and accepted masons of the state of Michigan, I declare Farmington Lodge 151 FNAM closed.